hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel. None of you have probably ever been here before or even knew I had a YouTube channel. Doesn't surprise me. I never told anyone. But welcome. I'm here in my room. As you can see, it's quite messy. But I'm not here to talk about the cleanliness of my room. I'm here to talk about how last year I competed in my first bodybuilding show and won. So before I actually get to the actual competition and what I did to plan, what I planned on doing, etc. Um, the year prior to last year, so 2018, I was actually planning on competing in the show that I was, you know, that I inevitably did. Yeah, I was um, told about the show and I was like, hmm, you know what? I've got a pretty good physique. Maybe I'll try it out. So I went on a diet. Um, it wasn't the best diet. It wasn't the best diet, um, nor the best prep, like at all. I hadn't planned out anything, like as thoroughly as I as I you know should have, for wanting to do a bodybuilding sh competition. Um, you know, my diet wasn't the best. I was still having meals with my family. Um, so you know, when you have food with your, you know, your family and stuff, you. you you can't really control everything that you're eating just because you know you're not <laughs> no one's always gonna want to eat chicken and rice every day so that wasn't great and also i wasn't really doing cardio at all i didn't practice my posing uh, and i was just overall unprepared you know in the end i did end up looking you know pretty good but you know it, it just wasn't working out so I ended up backing out of competing not that it really mattered because I didn't even sign up for the show <laughs> or book a hotel or nothing so I didn't lose anything plus I was a bit you know nervous about competing you know in my first show not only because you know I've never done it before but well I wasn't ready at all so I decided to you know then that same year 2018 um in christmas actually um martin mcdonald the uh founder of the gym uh of maximum fitness the gym i worked at the time he died suddenly like completely unexpected um it, that it was that and you know going to his funeral that you know made me realize you know what fuck it. who cares if i'm not ready you know because i i've always had this notion that oh you know um i'm not good enough to you know go up on stage i'm just not big enough or ready you know just generally unconfident it's a mixture of unconfident and just not being satisfied with you know the package that i have I just didn't think I was, you know, worthy to step up on stage and give those people a run for their money. I don't remember the exact date, but, uh, you know, early 2019, so last year, I said, you know, fuck it, I'm going to do it. So I spent, you know, a few weeks preparing, you know, gathering research and all that stuff on how I should diet, what sort of cardio I should do, how much cardio, um, all that stuff. Um, and what I ended up doing was, like I said earlier, I ended up eating chicken and rice and broccoli every day for 12 weeks straight. So it was a 12 week prep, you know, apart from the porridge or oats that I would have in the morning and the, you know, protein shake at night before bed, that was all I ate and, uh, it, uh, it drove me mad. Like literally, there was one point where I had just finished working out or something or doing cardio at the gym. I left the gym and on the road, there was, uh, I mean, this is fucking disgusting. There was a pack of like McDonald's chips or fries on the floor, on the road. And I, I looked at it and I was like, mm. <laughs> I so want to eat that from the you know, those chips from the floor, you know, and I was looking around making sure that no one was seeing, but you know, uh, 
as much as I had the urge to go eat those fucking fries from the floor, I didn't because I'm not an animal. Although it, it got that bad. But when you when you go so low on calories, you know, less and less every week, every week, you're gonna drive yourself mad. You know, that starvation mode, you're just completely deprived of <laughs> nutrients. You know, you go insane. But yeah, that was you know the diet side. And then for cardio, I started off, I think, with just 20 minutes. And then every week I amped it up a little bit to the point where by the end of the 12 weeks, I was doing 60 minutes of cardio on the Stairmaster, which I quite liked. I mean, as much as you can like cardio, it, it wasn't bad. You know, I, I can just put it aside in my mind and just focus on what I'm going to do on the show, you know, on show day, which really helped getting through it, just visualizing everything. And then I think... The most, the second most important thing, you know, besides getting in shape, was um, presenting your shape, presentation, and posing. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. While most people decide to, you know, do a prep <clears throat> for a competition to get a coach, you know, either for their diet or you know, helping them with posing, I got, you know, I didn't want any of it. I wanted to do it all myself. I wanted all the knowledge to myself. I decided to do it all myself which uh, probably added a bit of stress which uh, I mean when you're on prep that's the thing you least want just because you know stress can uh, eat up you know muscle tissue but uh, it didn't bother me I was happy to do it myself people urged me well urged me they uh, you know advised me to get a coach of some sort for either posing or you know diet but I don't need but uh, for posing, every day after, you know, training and after doing my cardio. So I would train, do cardio, and then do posing. So after, you know, doing cardio, I would um, go around to the hall on the other side of the gym. And I would pose for an hour straight. So I'd practice my mandatories and um, also practice my routine, which I also made myself. The song I chose for my routine was For Whom the Bell Tolls by Metallica. I can't show it here because of, uh, you know, copyright. I'll get to it later, but, uh, you know, it was pretty fantastic. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of everyone else that watched it. So, on the, I believe it was sometime in the start of March, my prep started. Week by week, I would take progress pictures. So, you know, going through the mandatories just to, you know, keep track of progress. Progress pictures, obviously, in the name. At the start, I believe I was 80.6 kilograms, and by the end, I was like 68. So I'd lost 12 kilos, you know, a kilo a week. And uh, I ended up looking, you know, pretty decent. I mean, I wasn't shredded to the bone like I would have wanted, but I mean, what can you expect? It's my first show, and I did the whole thing myself. You know, it, it was definitely a learning experience for me. Firstly, you know, going up on stage for the first time winning and also you know being on the prep learning how to do all of the things yourself learning how to adjust you know all the different variables i aimed to lose about a kilo a week any more than that then you you know be risking losing some muscle tissue as well which um which i did lose unfortunately i reckon i could have been much larger on stage but you know it, it was my first time and i was going through a lot during that prep actually um, you know, my, uh, uh I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, go into too much detail, but, uh, I had to move up with my mom and my siblings pretty early on, on the prep. Um, yeah, we had to move because of issues. You know, we, we moved houses and that was pretty stressful in of itself. And, um, yeah, we lived in the house for the entirety of, you know, the rest of the prep. Um, which, you know, didn't affect my eating habits or anything or my ability to train or nothing like that. But just being in that new environment, um, it just skewed up everything. It was a nice house, you know. It, it was quite nice, but, you know, just being in a... An environment you're not used to you know it, it, it's stressful and my cats know that as well because 
They kept pissing in my room. It was always in my room. Cats uh, tend to urinate in unusual places when they're stressed. So I just got the short end of the store. <sighs> but, um, you know, for, I mean, ages. The house had no furniture, really. I mean, the living room had a sofa. The dining room had a, ta you know, a table and chairs. And the room I got had nothing. I had nothing in my room. My room was bare. It had no bed frame. It had a desk and a mirror. And that was it. No, you know, wardrobes, no cupboards, no nothing. So, you know, I had to take my mattress. This is a new one, but you know, the old one I had um, over to my, you know, new bedroom. And, uh, you know, just lay it on the floor. And that was it. That was all I had in my room. For the entirety of that prep, I was sleeping on the floor. Really, there you go, there's another thing to be stressed about. As the weeks went by, and as I got, you know, leaner and leaner, and as my activity levels, you know, were going up, as the other one was going down, I really started to suffer. There came a point where I was just so physically exhausted, from, you know, training for two hours, doing almost an hour of cardio, doing an hour of posing, walking for so much, as well as increasing my cardio. I also increased my, uh, my daily steps, keep myself active, as if I'm not active enough, you know, keep myself active outside the gym, just so I'm not sitting on my ass all day. As it all, you know, came, like activity went up and calories went down, I was so physically exhausted, I could barely walk upstairs. It was so just exhausting to walk upstairs. And the thing was, to get to my house, you had to walk up a pretty big flight of stairs. So every day, I would walk up and down those stairs, and it was awful. I hated it. I, I, I despised it. I loathed it. And it also came to the point where even just walking, I had no energy. It felt so weird. It was very strange to not have the actual energy to walk. But because, you know, you have a goal and you're gonna do everything, you know, in your power to walk towards it, you're not gonna stop. You know, you're not just gonna be like, ugh, I can't be bothered, you know, I'm tired, I, I can't do this. You're gonna walk regardless. I wanted to stop and give up a lot of times, but I'm not gonna do that because number one, I have a goal in mind. I set myself up to do this. I'm, you know, way in too deep to just stop. And there's also people, you know, not depending on me, but rooting for me, you know? So I can't, you know, let them down like this. So, you know, I just had to keep going. Eventually, I got leaner and leaner. It also came to the point where it hurt to sit, like on a hard floor. Just because I had such little, you know, padding in my glutes anymore. You know, less fat there to cushion my ass. <laughs> but my hips, you know, were digging into the floor. And my clothes got really baggy as well. It didn't matter how tight I would, you know, put a belt around my waist. My my trousers would keep falling. I was that, you know, deprived, lean. I looked like a junkie, really. That's what I was compared to. But hey, I like the look, you know. It, it, the death face is, you know, what you want. You know, it, it's a good indication that you're lean, razor sharp jawline. No foot off the gas, you know. Just keep on going, keep grinding. Until, you know, eventually show day came. I booked a, a hotel in Perth. No, it wasn't a hotel, it was an apartment. Me and a few of my friends, we ventured there on, the, on their car. No, 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 before all that, peak week. So in peak week, you're supposed to get rid of really all of the glycogen in your muscles and stuff uh, to really, you know, deplete yourself and get that dry, crisp look. So day by day of that week, my carbs get lower and lower. I think I was only on 50 grams of carbs when peak week started but then you know as the days went I would go from eating 50 to 40 uh, 30 20 and I got very very depleted I did a little bit of uh, water manipulation I manipulating my sodium intakes of salt I got my hair cut I got my legs waxed yes waxed 
I couldn't have just shaved them. No, I, I could have, I just wanted, I wanted them waxed. Which was, uh, you know, <laughs> very painful, especially uh, in the more, the closer it got to, you know, down there. But yeah, I powered through it. I, I shaved the rest of my body. Fuck getting the rest, the rest waxed. I got my tan done, uh, <laughs> which I ended up looking like I came out of a mine. The day I got tanned, we left, you know, to go to Perth, like I said, to the apartment. Ironically, I did this on purpose, but uh, the apartment was called The Broch. And, you know, if you're from The Broch, I don't need to explain why that's funny. But for those that don't know for some reason, well, for some reason, like everyone knows, The Broch is the nickname for where I live. Yeah, we got there. It was a really nice place. Um, very well equipped. We stayed the night there. Then the next day, was show day. 